Welcome to the On Your Side podcast. I'm Gary Harper. And I'm Susan Campbell. We got the holidays coming up. Oh gosh, we're already smack dab in the middle of holiday season. It started a long time ago, Gary. I, I know, I know. It starts, well, as I say, it starts earlier and earlier, right? I was driving home from work the other day and you know, people were out in their shorts and t-shirts putting mm -hmm. up all the Christmas lights and really getting into it. Only in Arizona can you put up Christmas lights in shorts and it's, a tank top. It's kind of perfect, right? Oh, it's awesome. That's why we live here. Yeah. Um, so along with Christmas and holiday, we have trees, we have lights, we have gift, uh, gift giving, we have getting together with family and friends. You're stressing me out. I can feel the stress building of all of the things I have to do before we start traveling for there, the holidays. There's there's one thing I fail to mention about holiday. What is or, it? Or holiday, gratuities, yes. tipping. I mean, that kind of stresses a lot of people out because they don't know what to do, if they should do anything. If they don't do anything, then they feel like, you know, like they should have, or yeah, they you feel don't want to feel like you don't want to feel like Scrooge, right? Right, right. and but, it is. But where does the list end? Yeah, you're right. I mean, who do you give to, and who do you not give uh, give to? So uh, for that, we're talking to Jacqueline Whitmore. She's an author and etiquette expert, and she joins us on the On Your Side podcast. How are you doing today, Jacqueline? I'm great. How are you, Gary and we're, Susan? We're we're stressing. We're stressing about the holidays already. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to get through this and you're going to help us out. By the way, where are you joining us from? I'm joining you from Mount Dora, Florida, which is just about an hour northwest of Orlando. So oh. we also put up our Christmas lights in shorts and t-shirts. Yeah, that, and that's exactly why you live in Florida as well. So yeah, we, we know exactly what's going on there. Uh, so tell us a little bit about tipping. Um, before we get into who you should tip and who you should not feel obligated to tip, um, this is a tough, this is a tough time it's right a, now. I it's mean, people, a hard conversation for but, a lot of people's budgets. Well, and some people, you know, they're just living paycheck to paycheck. So first off, should people feel obligated to give a tip? I think it depends on your budget, like you mentioned, but it also depends on your relationship with particular people in your life. For example, if you have a dog walker or you have a babysitter who comes to your home regularly, or you have a pool maintenance person or a lawn maintenance person, these are people you see weekly almost. And, and so I think those people should be put at the top of the list. Yeah, and, and I just want to clarify, we're not talking about um, wait staff, like waiters or waitresses. You should always tip them, but this is the-, the uh, holiday this, tipping. This is the holiday tipping. Kind of the end of the year, thank you for, it's kind of like a little bonus maybe. Right. Like, thanks so much for everything you do for me throughout the year. Yeah, kind of right. Um, so I'll start off with uh, landscapers. Here in Arizona, a lot of landscaping going on. We got a lot of palm trees, a lot of, uh, believe it or not, grass to keep up with here in Arizona. Um, tell me about landscapers. Well, there are landscapers and then there are gardeners. As, and you live in a climate like I do where I, I get my palm trees trimmed twice a year, right before hurricane season and usually right after the holidays. So I don't see those people a lot. So I tend to put my gardener at the top of the list because I see him almost every week. He helps trim my plants and he, he does the little maintenance things around the, the yard that he mows the yard. And so I'm more apt to tip someone I see more regularly and someone who makes my life easier. So how much would I tip? I think that depends on, um, I, I might give him 50 to a hundred dollars. It just depends. Again, how many people are on your tipping list? You you have to write it down, set a budget, stick to it. Does it matter what the cost of the service is? For instance, if your uh, landscaper is only charging $80, you know, maybe I don't want to give them a hundred dollars. That's more than, you know, the landscape is, is done on a weekly basis. Is, is there a formula or rule of thumb when it comes to uh, dog grooming landscapers? How much of a holiday tip should you give? Well, yes. I mean, I'm, if you look at some of the historic etiquette books, the Emily Post's etiquette books, they will always say like a week's salary for the nanny or the babysitter or someone like that. But I think 
because of the times in which we live, we can make our own rules. And I'm saying that as an etiquette expert. So I'm not saying that you necessarily have to stick with the old rules because times have changed so significantly. So I would say, depending, again, it depends on your relationship. Does that make that person make your life easier or your child life life's easier? Um, so it, it just... It all depends. Etiquette is situational. I like this. You're giving us a little bit of an out because I was kind of starting to do the math and looking at these things. Like, oh, we have a few different babysitters that watch my kids depending on who's available, but they're not at our home all the time. It's just a random Saturday or Sunday here. And I'm thinking to myself, do I have to start like adding up costs here and there and everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, that does get stressful that my kids, one is in preschool, one's in a uh, daycare. I have to think about three teachers per classroom for them. You that's, know, it's, that's a lot of big. bodies. And those people are with my kids every day. Those people know and love my children. So I do want to do something nice for them. Uh, well, you also don't want to not do something yeah. because they're going to say, oh, Susan, um, she didn't tip me, so I don't want to take care of her kid as well as so I should. So her kid doesn't get a <laughs> snack today. Right, yeah. right. I well, don't... if you think about it, I would I would guess that you probably give that babysitter a little something extra after um, he, she, they take care of your children. For I'll give you an example. Yesterday, I had my driveway pressure washed. And it wasn't cheap. <laughs> so it never I, is. <laughs> it never is. When I hit the link, of course, everything's electronic now. And it, this the suggested tip uh, thing comes up. Do you want to tip 10 percent, 15 percent, 20 percent or other? Um, I, I'm thinking, my gosh, I only see this person once a year, but I'm going to tip this person. So I don't necessarily have to go back and give him another holiday tip because I, I just tipped him. So I think it just depends on how often you see that person. You know, you, you brought up a really um, a very controversial type topic, and I'm going to kind of get off the holiday tipping here just for a moment. When you're at a fast food restaurant uh, somewhere, you're, you're getting coffee or whatever. And nowadays, it's very common for them to turn that little terminal around and it, it says, do you want a tip? And it has the little 15, 20%, 25% or other. And I think a lot of people feel pressured into doing uh, uh, going ahead and tipping when they normally wouldn't have. So what do you do in a case like that when they turn that terminal around and they're looking at you? Hey, you got to tip me or not? You pay in cash. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also not done these days. It's also not done these days. So here's my philosophy. I mean, tipping is good karma. And the, the, usually the people who are working behind the counter, they're making minimum wage or maybe a little bit over. They are still trying to support their families or they're trying to work th their way through school or college. So I always give them a, a dollar, maybe two. I mean, it's not a big deal. If I can't afford to part with a dollar, I really shouldn't be eating out. Wow. That's good. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Who else do you need to tip during the holidays? I always think of my hairdresser because I go every five weeks. I think of the person who does my nails. I think of, uh, like I mentioned, the gardener. And, and, um, and how much for those, those people? Uh, we'll start with the hairstylist. Well, my gosh, again, that's an expensive, <laughs> that's an expensive, uh, um, person yeah let's, at least. Well, let's not give specifics because i don't think my husband knows what my hair okay. budget is so no, let's just no like, in case he happens to listen to this let's just not put me on the spot okay okay so if we're not going to give a dollar amount <laughs> no, it's okay i'm just um, kidding right i mean so I'll, I'll give you this tip okay okay so normally when i go to my hairdresser because it is so expensive and i go so frequently i i tend to give anywhere between 15 to 18%. She uh, owns the salon and, and she, anyway, I won't get into all right. of that, but 
But so I, for but, the holidays, what I might do is bump that up to 25% or even 30%. So it's a little bit more. She's still getting her tip, but it's a little bit more. And this would be at one of your regular appointments. You're just adding a little bit onto it. It's not like you have to go to the salon and deliver a card with extra <laughs> money or a gift Separate card inside envelope. of it. Right, right. So you can do that if you'd like, but I tend to do it even if it's if I miss the holiday season and it's one week after um, the end of the year, I'll still give her a holiday tip. Boy, I was reading earlier that you should tip the cost of the uh, hair service. The full uh, hair service? Yeah, which in your case, Jacqueline. Ooh, that, that's that, so expensive, that's, I would be having to double it. That, that, is, <laughs> that is pricey. Um, what about- it is. We, yes, we have I mean, a lot if you think about it, the average, um, and this is this is average uh, for a, for a, to have a woman's hair cut, colored, blow dried style, the whole bit. I mean, it can be upwards of a hundred, sometimes two hundred and more. Mm. So if you think about the cost of one session, I mean, that's you might want to add just the cost of one haircut. <laughs> Right. That might be 50 to 75. Right. And I know more men manageable. have it a little bit less expensive for men. Uh, we have a lot of pools here we in sure Arizona. Um, what about the pool cleaner? Oh, my goodness. Um, that person comes pretty often, I would imagine. Yeah, and weekly. I would say, you know, the old etiquette rules say the cost of one visit. And that's fine. But what you can do is you can also get a gift card. And let's say the pool cleaner loves music or it's a, it's a young person who's going through college. Get him an Amazon gift card or something. Maybe it's $25 or $40. Anything would be appreciated at this point. How about people who are, let's, let's go to the more, maybe more serious people in our lives. Like there's a lot of home healthcare experts who show up at our houses, nurses, or, you know, people who are helping us take care of maybe a loved one who, who we can't take care of on our own. Is that somebody who needs a tip is expecting a tip or is that kind of out of bounds for tips? No, that's a person who usually appreciates tips. Money always, <laughs> money always fits, and it's and no one ever returns money, not that I know of. So, <laughs> the, the etiquette books say a week's salary, but maybe that person doesn't come in every single week. So again, it just depends on if it's somebody who takes v very good care of your loved one, I would tip that person extremely well because you want that person to be appreciative and to continue that level of service. So we covered tipping. What about gift giving? Um, should, should you give your boss or your supervisor a Christmas or a holiday gift? Ooh, that's a really tough one because if you give your boss a gift, what I would recommend instead of you specifically giving that person a gift, go in with a, a group of people. Maybe you all chip in or you get that boss a small gift, but it really looks like you're trying to win favor if you don't know that person extremely well. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, people have that mentality that if you give me a gift, I have to give you a gift. So there might be some hidden meanings in that. So I would be really careful about giving your boss a gift. Maybe instead you give him or her or them a card, um, just expressing your appreciation. Or like I said, you go in with a group of people and you get them a gift card to a spa, a mani-pedi, something like that, something that they can use to pamper themselves. Or let's not forget these homemade gifts, homemade jams and jellies and, and things that ne not, not necessarily can be bought, but it is homemade and, and it comes from the heart. Yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. Well, I think that's probably uh, something that could, if you are struggling with the budget, I mean, you and I have talked so much about inflation and how to budget for the holidays and, and trying to find the very best deals. And the idea of tipping a lot of people really can just blow that whole plan out of the water, yeah. right? If yeah. you haven't planned for that, because now we're into the holiday season, we're like, you know, maybe one or two paychecks before mm -hmm. the holiday season is over. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't planned for it, haven't set aside, 
it could destroy the month. Yeah. So I like the idea of maybe if it doesn't fit in your budget, still finding a way to have the gesture yeah. of, I do appreciate you so much. Yeah, my, my wife is a hell of a uh, um, salsa maker. She, uh, she, I mean, it is dynamite um, salsa. So, I mean, we, we give that out to- That's so to, smart. To yeah. I love that. Um, and it's homemade and it's, you know, it's really good. I expect some. Hey, um, so not that you owe me a tip for anything, but I do expect some. <laughs> if salsa. you like salsa, I will. I will have a, a, a jar delivered to you. Okay. Um, so listen, we're gonna we're gonna milk you, uh, Miss Etiquette Expert. We're gonna we're gonna move on to something else here. What about attending um, holiday parties? Should you bring something if you're invited to a holiday party? And, and what what should you bring? I mean, it's okay to bring. I think. Salsa? So, well, not. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> Gary wants the pass on salsa right now. I mean, you could bring a bottle, right, uh, of, of, your, of your liking, or tell me a little bit about that. Okay, so yes, the, the answer is yes. You should always bring a host or hostess gift at, to show your appreciation for that person hosting you mm -hmm. at their party. So it can be something small. It could be... Um, linen embroidered napkins it can be napkin rings it can be a, a candle it can be chocolate something that they wouldn't ordinarily buy for themselves maybe a specialty um cookies or something like that something small and you want to make sure that you write a thank you note to that person or text that person the next day, letting them know that you appreciated their hospitality. But you don't just show up empty handed. And you mentioned a good point. You mentioned alcohol. You've got to be really careful because if you bring a bottle of champagne or a bottle of wine, don't expect that host to open it because that is a gift. That is a gift. I don't care if they drink cheap wine or not, that's something that they are to open at their leisure. So you also want to make sure that they like wine. Some people are wine snobs and will only drink a certain variety of wine. So don't just uh, assume that wine is always going to be that best gift. You know, I've heard of that before, and I'm I'm glad you kind of reiterated it. When you do bring a bottle, I mean, don't expect them to open it. Yeah. And and I've heard of other people say before, so and so bought a, brought a bottle, and you know, we didn't try it. They, we didn't try. It. Yeah. yeah, it's a gift. Yeah, I did. I brought a bottle of wine one time to a dinner party, and it turned out it wasn't a, a super close friend. It was somebody I was getting to know still, uh, and it turned out that she and her husband were not wine drinkers at all. They both, mm. I mean. They both liked, you know, cocktails and beer. It was just I chose the wrong version of right. it, and she, you know, later. How, how later did you on, find out? How later you... on in our friendship, you know, she was talking about like people always bring me wine. I was like, oh gosh, I was one of those people. Yeah, you don't like it, and that's yeah. when you found out. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Well, you brought something. And I'm sure she, I, I'm sure she ha used it for another party some other time. Yeah, so. she, she's a regifter. Probably, <laughs> probably. <laughs> she's, All right, she's a regifter. Right. Right. Well, let me say also that wine is a really easy go-to. That's why so many people bring it. But also flowers or a plant or an orchid. My suggestion with that is send your flowers the day of maybe you want to send a nice centerpiece that the host puts on their table on their living room table or dining room table or don't bring flowers straight from the grocery store in that cellophane packaging because what that does it takes the host away from their guest and then they go they have to go find a vase and this and that so mm -hmm. i would recommend that if you're going to bring some sort of plant you'd either do it the day before or you bring it in a way that they can just set it on the table. Yeah. I love that advice. That yeah. is such smart. I mean, advice. you don't want to cause more work for the host, right? No. So, and if you send it the day before, you give them a chance to kind of incorporate it into yeah. the decoration for the day. You sure. know, like maybe this is on the table where we're putting all our appetizers, or maybe it's on the dinner table or whatever. It, right. And it just kind of helps you get in that spirit. Jacqueline, are you, are you planning a uh, holiday party this year? I'm not, but I am having a few folks over for Thanksgiving, and it's a very small gathering because I live in a very small house. <laughs> That's my excuse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would I would be terrified to be invited to one of your functions because, I, I mean, you're the etiquette expert of America. 
So oh, well. <laughs> I, I would be terrified. Uh, did I bring the right thing? Did it, I bring the right flavor? Did, yeah. you know, is it big enough? Or, or am I picking up the right silverware? <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. Oh, oh my no, goodness. Not at all. I'm I, just a small town girl from the South. So uh, I eat with my fingers. Oh. <laughs> I love it. I mean, do you hold your wine glass with your pinky out? I don't think so. No, no. <laughs> Nobody does that, no. Gary. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Um, all right. Listen, Jacqueline, thank you so much for being on the On Your Side podcast. If people want to know more about you, or um, etiquette, or I know you're an author. Is there a website, the name of your book or books? Just go ahead and throw it out there for us. Sure, my website is etiquetteexpert.com. I mean, you can tell I've been around a long time to have that URL. I've been around for 25 years. So etiquetteexpert.com. And if your listeners and viewers go to the website, they can get a copy of my free ebook, which is Master Your Mingle Ability, which is perfect for this time of year. And of course, I've written a couple of books, one being Poised for Success, which is right here, mm-hmm. and Business Class, Etiquette Essential for success at work and those books can be found at your favorite um, online bookstore all right Jacqueline thank you so much I've learned a lot and um, have a great holiday season great Christmas season okay you as well happy holidays bye-bye thank you so much bye the on your side podcast is produced by Brad Denny our audio engineer and editor is Todd Martin segment producer is Colin Stanton and I'm Gary Harper And I'm Susan Campbell. If you have a problem you can't resolve, maybe we can't, send us a message through azfamily.com or our AZ Family mobile app. Look for the On Your Side section and leave us a message. Thanks so much for listening to the On Your Side podcast. And if you like it, leave us a review. We'll see you next week. On Your Side is on Good Morning Arizona every weekday morning at 645 and 7 o'clock and every weekday evening on Good Evening Arizona at 4 and 5 o'clock. You can also catch it on Arizona's Family News at 9 on 3TV every weeknight.